To prepare our solution, we'll use cobalt 2 hexahydrate and hydrochloric acid as our solvent. Be sure to write down the concentration of the hydrochloric acid as we're going to need it later in our calculation. As you can see, cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate is a sort of purplish crystalline solid. We're going to weigh this out using the analytical balance. So first I'm going to tear the balance so that it's zeroed out. Then I'm going to place a small beaker on the balance. Go ahead and write down the mass of the empty beaker in your lab notebook. Now I'm going to weigh out between 0.25 and 0.3 grams of the cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate. We're weighing by difference this time, so you want to write down the mass of the beaker plus the solid so that you can find the mass of the solid. To prepare our solution, we're going to add approximately 20 milliliters of our hydrochloric acid stock solution. This is just to dissolve it so that it'll make it easier for us to transfer it to the volumetric flask. So I'm about ready to transfer it to this volumetric flask. We're going to do a quantitative transfer. So notice that I'm not putting the stir rod down on the paper towel because I don't want to lose any of my solution. So I'm going to make sure that all of that gets transferred into the volumetric flask. Now what I'm doing right now is the volumetric flask has some water droplets inside. So I'm just conditioning it with the hydrochloric acid solution since that's what we're using as our solvent this time. When you do a quantitative transfer, you want to use a funnel so that you don't spill any. And then you want to make sure that you rinse off any glassware that came into contact with your solution. So for example, I'm going to rinse off this stir rod. And then I'll also rinse out the beaker another time and the funnel. This ensures that all of the solid that we weighed out actually makes it into the flask. Okay, so remember that when you prepare a solution, you want to mix it when it's still only partially full. Uh, the narrow neck on the volumetric flask makes it difficult to mix thoroughly if you start by filling it to that mark. So mix it thoroughly when it's halfway full. And then you can continue to prepare your solution by adding more solvent. Once you get close to the calibration mark, you do want to slow down and be careful by using a barrel pipette. 
And when you get really close to the calibration mark, you do want to add the solvent drop by drop while looking at the meniscus at eye level to make sure that it lies right on the calibration mark. Mix thoroughly for several minutes by inverting. We'll be using four water baths that are each at a different temperature, about 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, and 70 degrees, although you are gonna to wanna to record the actual temperature from the thermometer. We'll be collecting the absorbance spectrum of our solution at each one of these temperatures and also room temperature. To start out, we're going to use our hydrochloric acid stock solution to calibrate the Spectra Viz Plus. So like usual, to calibrate, you're going to click on the red box and choose Calibrate. It does have to go through a warm-up process, so I have skipped that this time. When it's done, you're going to press Finish Calibration, and then OK. The first solution we're going to take the spectrum of is our room temperature solution, because that's the easiest. Fill a cuvette about three quarters of the way full with our solution that we prepared. For each run, you're going to want to measure the temperature. So this thermometer is showing us what the temperature is of our room temperature solution. Be sure you take note of what each mark is worth on this thermometer and how many decimal places you're going to record. Okay, so press play to take the spectrum. Our spectrum contains two peaks because our solution is an equilibrium mixture of reactants and products and there's two species that absorb. The one on the left is due to the hexa aqua cobalt 2 complex which appears pink um, so it absorbs in the greenish blue and the one on the right is our tetrachlorocobalt 2 product which appears blue so it absorbs in the orange. We're just going to focus on this peak that's on the right, which is due to our product. Um, the lambda max of this peak, the wavelength where it absorbs the most light, is 679.90 nanometers. This is the wavelength where we're going to be collecting the absorbance of all of our samples. Notice that the absorbance of the room temperature sample is 0.050. So here is our solution before it goes into the water bath. This water bath is at approximately 40 degrees Celsius. We're gonna leave it in here for five minutes to allow it to come to the temperature of the water bath. I'm gonna speed this up though, because obviously you don't wanna sit here for five minutes watching this. Notice that the color of the solution has changed slightly compared to our starting solution. Now we want to record the actual temperature of this water bath. Because this thermometer has the numbers on both sides, it makes it hard to see. So the long line that's indicated with the red arrow is 40 degrees. You can see the actual temperature is slightly higher than that. So you do want to record that in your notebook with the correct number of decimal places. When doing this in real life, you want to try to collect the spectrum quickly after you take the solution out of the water bath to make sure it doesn't have time to cool down first.
Once again, you're going to write down what the absorbance is of this second peak at its lambda max. Okay, here we have our second water bath. This water bath has a temperature of approximately 50 degrees Celsius. You can see that there's an even greater shift to the blue compared to the first sample. Okay, and here's our thermometer. The long line is 50 degrees Celsius, so write down what the actual temperature is in your lab notebook. Here's our third water bath, which has an approximate temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. You can see as the temperature increases, there's more of a dramatic shift in color. Go ahead and write down what the actual temperature is from this thermometer. The long line is 60 degrees. And here's our last water bath, which has a temperature of approximately 70 degrees Celsius. Based on the color that this is changing when we heat it up, and which way that indicates that the reaction is shifting, do you think this is an exothermic or an endothermic reaction? This one's really hard to see. So this long line right here indicated by the red arrow is 70 degrees Celsius. Write down the actual temperature. While we're waiting for the spectrum of this last sample, let's recap what data you should have collected in your lab notebook. So for each of the five runs, you should have the temperature in Celsius and the absorbance of that second product peak written down you should have the lambda max of that product peak and also the mass of the empty beaker and the beaker plus the solid so that you can calculate how much cobalt-2 chloride we used. Don't forget that you'll also need the concentration of the hydrochloric acid stock solution to finish your calculations. <laughs>